Hello, my name is Natasha Trenchard-Turner. I'm a matron in critical care outreach and hospital at night at St George's University Hospital in London. I'm also one of the tutors for the Learning and Teaching in Healthcare Theory and Practice module at KCL and a tutor for the King's Somaliland Partnership. I'm a white British nurse who identifies as a woman and I've been working in the NHS for the last 17 years and volunteering with the King's Somaliland Partnership for the last six years. I subscribe to the interpretivist paradigm and so I believe that um, my background and experience shape my interpretation and presentation of the research I performed. Therefore this information is important for you to appreciate the study and its context. I completed my Masters in Clinical Education in 2019 with a dissertation that was an illuminative evaluation of the impact of a clinical mentorship course developed as a health system strengthening partnership with nurse tutors in Somaliland. So a little bit of background to this. The Republic of Somaliland is a self-declared independent state in the Horn of Africa that isn't recognised internationally. Up until 1960, it was a colonised protectorate of the UK. There was then a dictatorship and a civil war before the formation of the Republic of Somaliland in 1991. This has led to a deficit in health professionals due to infrastructure collapse, but also people leaving as refugees. The King Somaliland Partnership is a collaboration between the Centre for Global Health at King's College London and the higher education institutions in Somaliland that teach healthcare professionals. The aim is to strengthen healthcare systems through the empowerment of people through education, sharing experience, skills and knowledge. In 2014 and 2015, the King Somaliland Partnership delivered a mentorship course to the Somaliland nurse tutors at the request of the Somaliland Higher Education Institution leads. This was based on the nursing and midwifery standards for mentors that was used to teach UK nurse mentors at the time. Nurse mentors trained and assessed students, nurses in practice one-to-one -one in the UK. This is a deviation from the normal definition of mentoring in the literature that doesn't include assessment. It's relevant to this discussion to note that this system for preparing qualified nurses to teach students in practice, the mentorship, is no longer taught in the UK. Teaching students in clinical practice is complex and challenging. A literature review done at the time revealed very few papers evaluating courses preparing staff to do this. In particular, I was very interested in the transfer of curricula across cultures. We have a responsibility to our learners to ensure quality and relevance in the courses we deliver, and evaluation is key to improvement. Illuminative evaluation is used to explore the complexities of impl implementation, recognising that a student's learning cannot be examined separated from its context. Illuminative evaluation advocates the use of triangulation of methods to enhance trusty trustworthiness and to give the opportunity for different aspects of the research question to be examined. Observation was chosen as many believe it is central to understanding the context of the situation. All of the observations were student-teacher interactions followed by feedback. Interviews were the central source of data and focused on 12 key stakeholders. These included four of the UK lecturers who had taught on the course, four of the Somaliland tutors who had completed the mentorship course, and three, four of their students that they'd taught in practice. Secondary data included lesson plans, previous feedback, and paper documentation used during the course. A thematic analysis was then performed. The, the conflict between what is taught on the course, one-to-one -one mentoring, and the reality of teaching in Somaliland clinical areas was highlighted in interviews. We only had one nurse instructor and that does not fit all of us. In observations, I noted other patients watching through the window, as well as 10 students, myself and the nurse tutor in the room. 
the feedback was also delivered in front of other students. I would argue that models not taught on the course, such as debriefing, may have been a more valuable way of dealing with these group situations. The lack of resources in the clinical area was raised by nearly all of the Somaliland based participants. It was also noted during observations that there was no access to sinks or running water on many wards, a vital element to infection control, highlighted by the current pandemic. The variation in the definition of mentorship in nursing is much discussed in the literature, and this study continued this disagreement. This may be why the NMC has turned to using supervisor assessor language. A shared vision of a teacher's roles and aims may not have been completely present, which might have affected the impact of the course. The perceived impact identified by those teaching and participating on the course included understanding of a feedback model. The favoured one being the positive, negative, positive feedback package. This was reported and demonstrated in a number of the observations and interviews, including these two drawings that were made during interview one by a Somaliland nurse tutor and the other by a UK nurse lecturer. They show a shared mental model and I would argue the impact of the mentorship course. Observation supported the reports that the structure had been put in place and continued to be used up to three years later. There were other evidence being used like checklists being used as a format for supporting feedback. An additional perceived impact was the experience and knowledge sharing between participants and the benefits on self-esteem and value for both the UK and Somaliland participants. This idea of a community of practice in a country without many health professional educations and um, educators is powerful. Some of the areas identified for improvement included the pastoral support that students require. An association with burnout has been described in the literature where nurses feel a conflict between what they're taught to do and what they're capable of doing in practice. The students expressed in interview this discord between theory and practice in an emotional and distressed manner. I believe that a focus on this is key to preparing all nurse educated educators and that this lesson is transferable. Sustainability. There was little planning identified about how the programme could continue once the involvement of the King Somaliland partnership ended. There is a need for a plan for sustainability in all development work to prevent dependence. And this has been incorporated into programmes since. The key findings that I wanted to examine further were the contrast between what was taught and what was available in Somaliland and whether there was a shared agreement of what nursing was across the two cultures. Interestingly, many of the stresses and barriers, such as the emotional labour of the students, were similar to those identified by the Willis Commission report in the UK. There was evidence of shared learning objectives and shared visions, but there were also differences. Some of the limitations noted were that the research was performed in English and this may have been a barrier to people who participated on the course who were nervous about their English or didn't feel like their English was good enough to communicate. And this might have been a group that found the course different to interact with because the course was also taught in English. So this is a limitation of this study. Additionally, the participants were self-selecting, and so this could have um, put a bias towards those being involved who had a positive view of the course or wanted further interaction with the King Somaliland partnership. Other key stakeholders could have been considered, such as the clinical staff on placements, because they often have more interaction with the student nurses than the nurse tutors do themselves. And this could have actually given us more information about how to include this group in the future. There's also the argument that there was a possible impact of a teacher student power dynamic between myself and the participants, because I actually taught on the mentorship course and was the lead researcher. However, I would argue that as there's no absolute truth, we should just be interpreting the results with the knowledge in mind that I was both a part of the course and researching the course. 
Additionally, we included a Somaliland co-researcher, Fadima, and that was deliberately done to try and address some of the issues with power dynamics and cultural differences. In examining the learning gain from this study, I've been asked by the conference organisers to consider my findings in relation to recent events, meaning the COVID-19 pandemic. I believe that the importance of sustainability is key in this situation. When we cannot visit Somaliland in person, the theory and learning that has been shared is central for continued um, development to take place and the current situation emphasises how important this is. The previous use of tools such as online learning has been invaluable in continuing our partnership. Additionally, empowering our students to be able to cope with unprecedented resource shortages to prevent burnout, such as lack of oxygen, is something that is transferable to the teaching of all nursing staff around the world currently. I also believe this piece of work is relevant to, an relevant to another contemporary issue, the Black Lives Matter movement. The impact of continuing to use the curricula of countries that, pressed, that oppressed other peoples is not yet known. There is only one way that collaboration like the King's Somaliland Partnership will strengthen and benefit the people it aims to help. And this is by addressing the complexities of our shared history. Though no conflict was identified during this study, there is a possibility that there was an unintended hidden curriculum that could have led to an imbalance of power dynamics, having a negative impact on the course. One student commented during interview on the idea of the partnership, stating, we're hoping to gain the hand of the British again. It is difficult to interpret what the student meant, and I hope that it is a symbol of collaboration, but I would argue that further evaluation and critical analysis is required to ensure a true partnership. This study adds value and rich data to our knowledge of how we prepare nurses to teach in clinical practice. This is an under-researched area, particularly across cultures, and further investigation of how to address student emotional labour, cross-country curricula and collaboration is required to continue the development of nurse education. Thank you very much for your time.